we're here with Jody Black from Carolina Game Tables to talk about some of the awesome developments they have in tabletop gaming tables. Jody, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm always good. I mean, it's always a good day to be at C2E2. So tell us, why did you guys decide to start Carolina Game Tables? Uh, that's a good question. It's kind of like our chocolate and peanut butter moment, and actually it's not my idea. It was Clint's idea, my husband. Uh, he has three generations of furniture manufacturing experience, and we've been in the game industry for 15 years. We're known for making the game Savage Worlds, which I've got my jacket on for. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of went, uh, wait a second, we can make gaming tables and we have the manufacturing experience to be able to do them quickly and um, at a great quality. And we were like, why don't we do this? We did that. And you clearly have done it well. So tell us a little bit about some of these tables. Okay, thanks. So this is our dining game table. This was our uh, one that we started with as a Kickstarter. In 2015, we funded on the first day. We were the first company to do a gaming table Kickstarter. and We've never been a million dollar Kickstarter, but that's fine by us because we've never had to face those logistics problems. And we've just had nice steady growth in the past five years. What are some uh, features that your tables have that maybe some other tables don't? Okay, so first of all, our tables are meant for everyday dining first and game night the second because we know that people are going to use them every single day as a dining game table or as a dining table because they need to use them for food, for homework, for crafts, all that stuff. So every single one of our tables comes with a dining top. That's included in the price. And then we also don't have any moving parts. So you'll notice our cup holders are built into the ledge here. Okay, yeah. And when your tabletop is in place, it covers that. It comes all the way to the edge. Okay. And, and, I, and I noticed that it's got a beautiful finish. I mean, it's clear that you guys have been in the furniture game for a while. Yes, thank you. My husband's uh, father's furniture company is still going strong. It's called Old Hickory Tannery. You can look them up. They make high-end leather and upholstered furniture. Um, so we understand the quality that goes into some of the higher-end game tables out there, and we really appreciate what they're doing. But we wanted to uh, hit that demographic of people who want a game table and one that can hit uh, most people's uh, price points. Yeah, and I mean, they, they're reasonably priced tables. They're absolutely gorgeous. I love the, the felt top on here. Um, it just makes it so that you could do anything from card games to, you know, tabletop token games and it's just absolutely beautiful. And it comes in all of these colors, the felt does? Yes, and that is commercial grade velveteen. So oh. it is stain resistant, rip resistant, um, fade resistant. It is meant to last you forever. It's the kind they use in hotel lobbies and bars, so you can throw up on this. It's okay. Well, if the game gets too intense, I just may. <laughs> Tell me, Jody, I want to hear about Savage Worlds because I've been hearing little whispers all around the con floor about this wonderful game. Thank you. So um, we just came out with a new edition. It's called the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. Uh, with our new core rules, we've really changed just a few things about it. Um, some feedback that we've been getting from game masters and from our own people on staff about uh, ways to make our game go a little bit smoother. So it's not been a change um, whenever we come out with a new edition. It's not like a change from like say 3.5 to 4.0 or any of those kind of new additions. You can still play with our old rules or even our old settings using the new rules with just a few changes. Um, so it's still fast, furious fun. It's even more fun. We've got a lot of cool products out there to support it and we're cutting out new stuff every day. Now, somebody like me who's only played a couple, you know, game types as like Apocalypse World and D&D 5e, what are some of the main differences in your game rules? Okay, so like with some of the other game systems, we've got a core mechanic, and once you've learned the core mechanic, you can apply that to other genres. So you can do a pulp game, you can do a fantasy game, you can do a sci-fi game, you can do, and, and we have licensed games too. So we have the setting for uh, Flash Gordon because we have the license for that. Wow. Yeah, we <laughs> have Flash. <laughs> um, Hi, he's the savior of the universe. <laughs> Sorry. You had to do it. Of I course. had to do it. Of course. Um, we also have some great licensed uh, comic settings like The Goon and Fear Agent. Um, we're working on a few others. I can't mention those, of course, right, but of since course. we're at C2E2, those are, you know, top on the mind. Um, and, you know, we just have our own settings that are really cool, too, like Deadlands. It's been around for 20 years, uses Savage World's core mechanics. So you learn our core rules. You can homebrew anything you can imagine. So if you have a popular video game that you'd like to play and you want to do it as an RPG at your home table, you can do that with our core rules. 
When I was talking to Clint yesterday, he was mentioning that uh, there were, I can't remember the name of the, 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 the idea behind it, but there were all of these like moments that you had, and in between those moments, you could input your own homebrew. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so what he was talking about is our plot point campaign right. style, okay. yeah, of our, basically how we set up our adventures, our campaigns. So if you got, for example, our East Texas University um, setting, uh, which has been a very popular setting for us, it's basically uh, campus horror, and you start Ooh. as a freshman and you graduate as a senior, and you do have to pass your exams, people. Sorry, you don't get a pass. Just because you're fighting supernatural evil, you do still have to pass your exams, too. No free ride here. No, no free ride here, and especially if you've got a scholarship, you better keep your grades up. Um, so, you know, so you've got that kind of stuff going on. But in the plot point campaign, the major highlight events are, for example, freshman orientation and culminating with senior graduation. In between those major events, you can put in your own adventures to kind of flesh out uh, sidelines um, and other storylines that maybe your players are kind of coming up with on their own, as players will do. And where can people pick up the, the core kit for Savage Worlds and some of these awesome tables? Okay, so two separate companies, two different websites. We're just associated with both. So tables. <laughs> Tables are Carolina Game Tables, and you can find us at carolinagametables.com. Mm -hmm. uh, the game is called Savage Worlds. It's made by Pinnacle Entertainment Group, and you'll find it at peginc.com. So peginc.com. Peginc.com, carolinagametables.com. Guys, take some time out of your day and check out these fine products. I'm really hoping that we can get one of these tables for Podquesters because they are absolutely gorgeous. Jody, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.